We're using greased weasel for the main body of the rig. Uh, this is 50 pound line, but you can use 60 or 70. Uh, they all work. This is my preference, so the 50 pounds. So we're going to measure out a meter and using these toenail clippers. These are really good, actually. Um, don't cut my nails with them, but they're good for cutting line. If you do that at an angle as well, like 90 degrees there, you'll find that that point will make threading on the terminal tackle a lot easier. So with the lead clip on our right hand there, I'm going to form a, a loop. I'll put my finger, this index finger in there, okay, and then pick up the tail end. And at this point, it's worth making sure that everything's quite tight. So you've got your left hand sort of pulling on uh, the rest of the line and holding that um, tail between the finger and forefinger. And we go one, two, three, and three is enough for this. You can do four turns. Um, for 50 pound line, do three good turns there. Then pinch the running end, that end there, between the thumb and forefinger, keeping everything tight. You'd moisten the line as well. But you want to go back through the way you've come. One, two, and three. Okay, make sure that that's got a bit of spit on it as well. Um, lovely. Okay, and then you're going to pull the tail, pull the other bit of line. You're basically going to move everything to tighten up that knot at the same time. And you'll find that the knot forms on the line itself. Just tweak it down, make sure that it forms properly. And then run that knot all the way back down uh, to whatever you're tying it onto. So in this case, we've got the uh, lead link there. And you've obviously got your meter of line here in my left hand. Straighten that out a little bit. Some people use old um, inner tubes from bikes to straighten that out. That's a good idea. Um, but it hasn't got much of a memory, this greased weasel. And then obviously we just want to clip off this bit of line here. Don't go too close. Um, just leave a little tag on the end. And then you want to slide down your items of terminal tackle. Uh, we're using swivels here, the size 10. Um, they've got a 100 pound braking strain. They're stainless steel eyes on these, um, marketed under different names. But that, that's what you want, really, size 10s. And you're going to clamp those between two aero beads. Now, the aero beads there have got a thin end and a thick end. And you want the thick end to meet the eye of the swivel. OK, so when you, even when you clamp those on um, using those crimps, uh, it still moves around. OK, so don't be afraid to clamp that really, really tight. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So you've got um, your crimp, your bead, your swivel, your bead, and your crimp, and then you're replicating that three times. We're doing the three hooks. OK, so starting with the uh, what will be the bottom hook. OK, get the other ones out of the way, and you just want to crimp on that first swivel. I use these crimping pliers to crimp my crimps, but you can use um, a rounded nose pliers as well. Okay, so the first one that we're going to crimp will be nearest to the lead clip. So move the other bits out the way. And all you're doing is pressing down just very gently and it just crimps it to the main line. And that's it. Now, because we've got our aero beads the right way around, we can tuck that right in like that so it's push right down and then when you're ready you crimp it and you should find that that swivel will move around in there even though the beads are sort of touching each other. At the other end you're doing the same knot on the larger swivel here, still a hundred pound braking spain, this is a, a size two nickel swivel, okay so exactly the same knot, okay so exactly the same really and then you've got your uh, top assembly there of the Crimp the bead, the swivel, and slide that right up to the top. So you're now going to have one on the bottom, which you've already crimped, and then this one, where it's going to meet the main line on that larger swivel up there. So exactly the same thing again. You want to crimp that on. Here's one I made earlier. Always remember to moisten those knots as well. You don't need to see that again. And then slide it down to find the midway point between the top and the bottom um, swivels and it'll be about there. You can measure it if you want. That's just the easier way of doing it. Okay, then we're going to tie the three hooks on. You want the hooks onto the line first. So similar knot, this is a blood knot. Keeping everything tight. One, two, three, four, and five. And then through the middle 
there okay pinch it with your thumb and forefinger and moistening blah 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 and then pull it tight do give it a little check as well you don't want to be using a dodgy hook occasionally you'll find a hook with a um, little defect in it but those those hooks are the B940s the Aberdeen 10s good for lugworm ragworm and things like that and you're going to prepare three of those um, the snoods themselves are about 30 centimeters I think it's about 11 inches something like that um, and the, I'll have the details underneath so very important to make sure that the hooks don't cross over as well that's the top uh, snood coming down there working right to left and when you look at it that hook misses the swivel of the second hook down and in turn the middle one middle snood shouldn't um, hook up on the bottom one so it's just over the top there and then your bottom snood is the one that sits with the weight on it that will fish off the bottom and catch all the fish I tend to tidy my rigs up and put them on these little rig winders but you can use bags as well or rig wallets obviously so let us know what you think of the video um, it'd be great if you could subscribe if you want more of these videos let us know or if there's a particular rig um, please mention it in the comments and thanks very much for watching uh, i'd really like your feedback as well thanks